All right, so today I'm gonna to go ahead and try and tackle making the seats <clears throat> for the dinette. But first, I'm gonna try and see. I made these pieces of uh, wood for sort of shelves on the inside of here, and I'm just uh, in the process of fitting them. I made some cardboard templates first, and then I cut these out, but they're still a little bit too big. So, yeah, that's the plan for today: is um, fitting those and getting started on the seats. Hopefully being able to finish the seats today, that'd be great. Um, you can see I put in the shelves, cut them to length, and uh, that really, really served to make this whole thing a lot more sturdy. I mean, it's really sort of bomb-proof now, and uh, before it was quite flimsy, so that's uh, really great. Let's get to it. Alright, so you can see I've got the first one fitted in here. It's got a, some gaps, uh, which aren't, you know, perfect, but it really is a sort of awkward spot to sort of measure from. So all in all, I'm quite happy. I think it looks nice. And uh, once I get that screwed in, it's going to serve its purpose of being a um, shelf at the bottom of this. So uh, let's see if we can get the other one fitted. So what I've actually found out is that it's sort of uh, advantageous to make a bevel on the bottom and to make it easier to get it in. So what I just do is um, find out which side is the top and um, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. This makes more sense. And uh, I just bevel the underside here, which, uh, which really helps it get in the last bit of the way, just with a plane. Just like that. And just give it kind of a steep 45 45 degree angle on the underside, which uh, sort of helps it get in the last bits. That's good, and then for these sort of smaller portions where you can't get a plane in, what I do is I just do it with a chisel, because nobody's going to see that side anyway. Alright, well lesson learned. Make your cardboard templates more accurate. <laughs> but um, now I've got them in. Uh, I may need to do a little bit more f finagling uh, just to get them because I don't want them to actually sort of push up against uh, the woodwork or the hole and right now they're sort of wedged in that position so I'm gonna have to make them just a little bit smaller but you know just to get an idea of what it looks like this will be sort of where you can put your stuff um, so that it doesn't run down there and it has the added benefit of uh, not showing that uh, ghastly EVA foam. Cool. Well, now I'm gonna um, mount the side pieces of the seats and then start making some templates for the other bits I need to cut today. So, cool. Let's go. Alright, well, now I've mounted the side piece so that gives you kind of an idea of high, how high the seat's gonna be. Um. It's kind of ingenious the way it's connected. It's just uh, this fiberglass tabbing on the bottom, and then there's a screw bolt going through there, and that's just how you attach it. I'm gonna try and make this really sturdy, uh, which means using lots of cross braces and stuff, uh, just because I, I feel like it's very important uh, on a boat that you feel like you can uh, jump on the seats if you have to. Uh, yeah. So uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and make some plywood tim. Uh, make some cardboard templates for the tops and sides and everything um, and uh, That'll be it. Yeah, I think cool. I've got the chair partly assembled You can see there's just battens of wood that I've screwed into the well the backing plate and then the, oh, That bit here <laughs> And then uh, this is the side I put on. I had to curve it on the bottom, but that wasn't too difficult. I could use the old pieces um, that used to be in here. And then I just screwed this bit on on the front, and it really sort of it really 
seems pretty rock solid now, but I'm gonna also add some sort of cross braces uh, at the corners uh, just to give it that extra bit of strength. And then I've learned from my past mistakes and I've made a sort of pretty precise cardboard template of what the front bit uh, of plywood will look like. Uh, it's not perfect, messed up a little bit there. But in general, I would say it looks pretty good. Now I just need to build up the chair on this side and make a cardboard template for that. And then I will be ready, I think, for um, the next part, which will be adding the plywood to the faces and uh, painting the chairs, basically, yeah. All right, so it's starting to look like something. I just uh, have to do a bit of planing. Yeah, but it's getting there. It's cool. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm gonna make uh, sort of some hatches in the seats. And what I did was I just made a cardboard template, you can see it over there. So something I thought would look neat. And I just traced it on these boards. And then I think the trick will be to cut on the inside of the lines here. And then on these sort of new hatch bits I made over here. Uh, cut on the outside and I'll see if I'm smart enough to remember that but let's go all right so that's Two holes cut. Um, looking all right. I'm a little worried about the sort of st strength of the seats now that I've cut out a big chunk of plywood in the middle. But you know, on the other hand, I I need hatches. So um, yeah. Now just to cut the uh, hatches out. All right. So first one cut, and guess what? It doesn't fit. <laughs> so. I suppose we'll have to do a little bit of fine shooting. Alrighty-o, so now I've got the seats installed and in place with their respective hatches. Um, you know, did a fair enough job on the hatches there. Not perfect, but not too shabby either, and open up to quite a bit of storage space. And I'm gonna put the, the same sort of... Um, same sort of uh, battens in here as well, just to save the side of that Eva foam. Um, so that's cool. And then what I'm gonna do just to oh, make it even sturdy is gonna, I'm gonna add in some uh, cross braces going that way, and the same there in every corner on both sides. And then uh, all that's left is just to paint them. And then on what's to the table. Exciting stuff.